Hey everybody, welcome back. So this right here is brand new carpet and below that is brand new underlay as well. And it made a huge difference in the way this room looks and feels because honestly it was in pretty sore shape before I did this. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do exactly that. This is a small space, it's a 10 by 10 room. The other room I did was nine by 11, that's the same difference. If you guys have a relatively small space in your house and you're looking to put new carpet and underlay down and give that room a massive boost up, Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how. This isn't really a video on how to do carpet in a bigger room, because there is extra steps in going about doing that, but if you guys have a small space like I do, this video's for you. Check it out. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is rip all this old garbage out. Now this is a little rattier than normal because I'm in the process of doing the room and I've been spilling paint all over it, I'm not worried about it. But for tools to rip this out, I've got a hammer and a good pair of pliers and those are basically gonna get the staples out uh, from all the underlay. They're gonna help me carve them up because I'm gonna be replacing the padding down on the floor as well. I've also got a good sturdy knife. Now I'm talking a good like metal handled knife, not a plastic flimsy one because you're gonna be ripping on this guy pretty hard. And then I've also got a linoleum cutter. Now you can get carpet cutters, but they're all they're just basically glorified knives. They, the linoleum cutters have a nice big heavy duty hook blade on them that allows you to get up underneath the carpet and it's sharp the entire way so you can just start pulling and it works great for cutting long good strips of carpet out. So the easiest place to start on this is in a corner. Just claw at it until you can get it lifted up. Once you got that, shimmy over between two to three feet, whatever you feel comfortable with, and just start ripping a long straight line. That way you can roll the carpet up into rolls like this and it just makes it a lot easier to transport. So just split the room up into sections like that and just start cutting and then repeat the exact same process for the underlay. But one word of warning I'm gonna give to you is you will go through knife blades like crazy. The carpet and underlay will eat your blades alive, so just beware of that. Hi. <laughs> BB? Can you, can you hear me? I hear you. Now normally under your carpet you would expect to find plywood subfloor. In my case, I'm still finding this horrendous tile that I've been finding throughout the house as I've been going. So anyway, don't matter, ignore that. What we're after is the staples all along the edges that we're holding in the underlay. Now you're not really gonna find those throughout the center of the room. You may find the odd one between two pieces of underlay that met up. Um, but generally you're going to find them around the perimeter. I like to literally just take my hammer, just scrape against them, find them, pair of pliers, peel them out of the floor. Once you've done that, we'll just go ahead and give the entire area a good vacuum with a shop vac. Make sure we pick up all the crap, all the staples we may have missed, all of the junk and dust that was probably under the carpet and get it all nice and clean. Alright, with everything cleaned up and out of our way, now we can talk to what's actually going to hold the carpet down and that is our tack strips. So if you've got a room where you've never had carpet before and you're installing it for the first time, all along the edges you're going to need tack strips. Now carpet tack strips are these little strips right here, they're quarter inch plywood and they've got a whole bunch of little short nails into them and the nails are all actually on an angle. Now, you want to make sure when you install the tack strips, you install them so that all the little nails in them are facing towards the wall. That way when you tuck the carpet up to the wall, it hooks into the nails and that way it can't pull back. That's what's going to hold uh, tension on the carpet. You also notice that there's actually some actual nails all along the length of it as well. Those are what are actually going to hold the tack strip to the floor. Now, in my case, 
I've got tack strips all along the floor because it had carpeting here before. So I'm just going to go ahead and give them a quick inspection and reuse what I can. I've got a couple spots that are a little bit uh, beaten up and the nails are pounded flat. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace those. So inspect what you have, reuse what you can. If you want to replace it all, be my guest. You don't have to. When you install the tack strips, if you've left your baseboard on the wall, if you're not going back to bare walls like I have here and your baseboard's still installed, make sure you install your tack strips a quarter inch out from your baseboard. If you don't have baseboard down, just make sure to install your tack strips about five eighths to an, uh, three quarters of an inch away from the wall. And that will make sure that once you install the baseboard, you can tuck the carpet underneath the baseboard and everything will be fine. Alright, now it's time for our carpet pad underlay. So this is really simple to install. We're just going to flush it up with our tack strips and then just roll it out. Then using, again, our sharp sturdy knife, cut it off flush with the other end of the tack strips and then lay down another section. To install it all along the edges and again where our seam is going to be, we're going to be using this guy here. Now this is a hammer tacker. You can get a whole bunch of different brands, different kinds of these. It's basically a glorified angry staple gun. Instead of the normal staple guns where you have to squeeze them and push, this guy you literally just swing it like a hammer and every time it impacts this will collapse and you'll fire in a staple. This reloads in the back end here, we got our staples, so we're just going to start going around the outside, get angry with it, lay it down. Now this part isn't that hard, it's just annoying because the roll's in the way. So I like to roll it out and then back a little bit, make a small notch and then flip it back over using the roll as a straight edge, cut it off, and that'll give you a couple inches overlay, and then literally run your knife along the edge of the tack strips, and that'll give you a clean cut edge the entire length. When it comes to stapling everything down, about every 12 inches, 16 inches or so, uh, just go around the entire perimeter and then staple it. You can go down the center as well, or you can tape the center seam. It's entirely up to you. The easiest way I found in my case was to actually lay it on the opposite side of the room and then overlay in the center and then cut them off flush with each other and then just staple down the center. But yours may be a little different than mine. And then also don't forget to cut out any vent holes for your furnace or anything like that. All right, when it comes to measuring for your carpet in your room, there's a couple ways you can do it. Myself, I have a local store that sells leftover cutoff pieces. They're just big squares of carpet. You go in, you find the size that works approximately for you, and you bring it home, and you cut it up and install it. The second way is you can take your tape measure and get wild and crazy and draw out your entire room and measure every wall. You wanna make sure that everything is accurate and precise, so that way, when they cut you off a piece of carpet, it's going to fit your room exactly. And that looks something a little like this where you, your entire room is drawn out and you got a measurement for everywhere. If you're going the square carpet route, what you're gonna to need to do is take your measurements of your length as well as your width and make sure to include anything else like a closet. I have a closet right here, so I'm gonna go from this wall all the way to the back of the closet and that'll give me just my big square. In this case, I need a 10 by 10 chunk. That'll give you the exact size that you need. But, you're always gonna to wanna to add a little bit extra to that. So in my case, I can only buy it by the foot, so I needed at least an 11 by 11 piece, and that will give me a little bit of extra wiggle room that I can cut the carpet down to size and make it fit. Make sure to account for a little bit of leftover. Give yourself a little bit of grace so you're not stressing out about making it fit exactly. All right, once you've wrestled your carpet into the room, and believe me, you will wrestle it because this backing material right here will rip paint off everything you walk past just by thinking about it. So you do not want to touch this to anything. But it's in the room, now we're going to start laying it out. So once we lay it out, we're going to lay it out a few inches past and up every single wall. And then we can start kneeing it down and tucking it onto the tack strips. Oh boy, if you really want to talk annoying, try moving and adjusting and sliding a carpet around by yourself. I would highly suggest if you can, get a second person for this because it is stiff and heavy. 
Okay, so I lucked out big time. My carpet cutter actually managed to cut a straight line. So that's awesome. I will not have to wrap my carpet up on these two ends here because I have a perfectly straight line in line with my walls. So I'm just gonna leave that as it is. That way I don't have to trim this to size. So I'm gonna get my closet cut out and then continue rolling it on and then cut that side off after. Okay, now when you get to an obstruction like this, in my case, this little kick out wall for the closet, it can be a bit of a pain because that carpet's not gonna wanna lay flat on you. So we're gonna need to make a bunch of relief cuts and go around the closet as we go, and that will allow the carpet to lay slowly flatter and flatter over time. In my case here, I could push it down to the floor, so I cut it to the exact length I needed. But if you can't get it pushed all the way down, cut it long, just like this, and then come back once you've got it laying flat and cut it flush with the floor. That'll make sure you don't cut it too short. Also, hold your knife flat to the floor horizontally as opposed to flat to the wall vertically and that will make sure you don't end up cutting the carpet too short with your knife being at the wrong angle. Okay, once you get to a corner like this, like I said, we're going to have excess that rolls up the wall. Now, if you went excess on this wall, excess on this wall, in order to get it to lay flat into the corner, what you're going to do is take your knife, you're going to lift up the corner and you would just run the knife down to about well, to about the floor, and that would allow this piece to lay over and this piece to lay over. That way we can trim along the wall and it'll sit nice and flush in the corner. Next tool you're going to need this is an oddly expensive tool, but you can rent this. I rented this one just from a Home Depot. Uh, I paid my own money for it, no sponsor, no nothing, but you can rent this guy pretty much anywhere, and it is just a carpet knee kicker. So it has a whole bunch of teeth on it, and those are going to grab into the carpet, and this ends nice and padded, and you're basically just gonna lay it down, get a good cinch on it, Pressing down, and as you see, that locks it into the tack strips. So you're gonna start with your longest wall first, then your second longest wall, third longest, fourth longest, blah, 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 working your way around the room. So I'm gonna start on this wall and start in. Now the eagle-eyed out there might notice that it's kind of bunching up along the wall at me and rolling up, and that's fine. We're actually gonna come back afterwards and trim that off, and that'll actually give us a perfectly flush fit along the wall. If you still have baseboard installed, that's actually what's gonna tuck underneath nicely and give you a clean look too. Okay, so I just finished kneading that wall. Now I'm onto this one. I'm kicking this one into place. Now, one thing to note, if you're doing anything bigger than a small bedroom like this, this one is 11 by nine. Um, you're definitely gonna want to rent a, uh, it's basically kind of like a stretcher. So basically it's got one giant end on it like this and another flat end. So the flat end is gonna go along the opposite wall that you just tamped in and it's basically gonna press along that. And it's got a giant head on it over here with a big lever and when you push the lever down it actually stretches it out and it pulls the carpet taut. And you're going to do that in a few places around the room. So if you're doing anything bigger than this, you definitely want to get one of those machines. You can rent those too. But for a small bedroom like this, on the second wall, I'm basically starting further back. And to take out any little wrinkles and waves I may have across the room, I'm just going to knead a couple times and that'll tighten it up. Then I'm going to slide this forward because my body weight's on it. It's not going to pull back. Then I'm going to slide this forward and actually lock it onto the tack strips. And that takes out any of the slack in the carpet. Now once you've gone around the entire room and you've stretched all the carpet out, go ahead and give everything a quick inspection and see if there's any parts that have lifted up ever so slightly and just give anything that needs it a good kick in again. Everything is smashed and kneed and pulverized into place. Now the last thing we gotta do is just trim off any of these little edges that are still kind of sticking up. So again, just go ahead and use your knife, run it along the edge. Once you've done that, you're going to take this paddle spatula looking thing, this is a carpet tucker. If you still had your baseboard installed and you just are replacing the carpet, you didn't touch it, it's still on the wall. Once you, what you're going to do is you're going to come, once you've got it neat into place, if you just want a little bit of extra tension, like I said, you've already got it trimmed to size, 
You're just going to use this guy and push it and it's going to tuck and slide underneath your baseboard and you'll never know if you ever replace the carpet without taking the baseboard off. It'll be beautiful. Once everything is stretched, kneed, cut, and finally laying into place, you can go ahead and add your door transition strip to finish it off and then clean up because you are going to have carpet bits everywhere but you can take sweet satisfaction in those awesome carpet lines. Okay, and that's it. It's not overly complicated by any stretch. It's a lot easier than a lot of people think. So I hope you guys picked something up in this video. I hope you learned a lot. And I hope it inspired you to maybe get out there and tackle and rip apart a room and give it an update in the flooring department with some brand new carpet just like I did. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.